Good day and welcome to our special program. This is a show that encourages a cruelty-free approach to life and to giving more consideration to the welfare and rights of animals. The lack of consideration humans give each other in the world today is exceeded only by the lack of consideration we give the other animals with whom we share this beautiful planet. I'm Natalia, and my personal belief is there are many compelling environmental and ethical reasons for encouraging people to stop eating animals that are imprisoned and killed for human consumption. There also happens to be very sound theological arguments in the Judeo-Christian biblical tradition against the eating of meat. Vegetarianism and the protection of animals and the environment does have a very compelling ethical and practical basis. We are on location in Fort Lauderdale to meet with several wonderful people involved in these essential causes right after these messages. Housing developments, paved roads, industrial parks, new construction is everywhere. But for every bulldozer or crane that takes a bite out of our tropical paradise, Florida's natural environment and wetlands are further squeezed into smaller and smaller spaces. Thousands of animals are being forced out of their homes. Starvation, sickness, pesticide poisoning, and injuries are an everyday occurrence as animals struggle to coexist with their human neighbors. Our goal is to rescue, rehabilitate, and release native wildlife that have been harmed or displaced, to treat certain needy domestic exotic and farm animals, and to educate the public toward peaceful coexistence with all animals. Our dedicated team of full-time veterinarians, animal care staff, and trained volunteers attend to the sick, injured, orphaned, and abandoned. 365 days a year. Getting the animals to the center is the other key challenge. It requires a team effort between staff and community volunteers. Our two fully equipped ambulances travel across three counties responding to emergencies. We are on location at the Wildlife Care Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And with us is Diane Wachinski, the Ethical Code uh, Compliance Director. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Richard. Please tell us, right here at this center, why are all these animals here? All of the animals here are primarily victims of hum human hazards in one way or another. For instance, our wildlife um, are suffering in the state of Florida because of such increased development. Um, every time a new shopping center or a housing development goes up, some animal loses its home. All the trees and, the, and the, the fields and the places the animals used to live in are gone. And there's no place for them to go. And they're learning to coexist with humans. And some humans are not so happy about coexisting with them. Uh, as tourism increases, we see an increase in the number of pelicans, for example, that are tangled in fishing hook and line. Uh, and people aren't aware of what to do to deal with that. Uh, lots of babies being knocked out of nests as trees are cut down. Uh, and as far as um, domestic and exotic animals, when people uh, want to go out and get the trendy kind of pet, and then when the uh, excitement wears off and they don't want them anymore, they don't know what to do with them, and they either want to release them into the wild or find someone to take them. So we have kind of two different issues that go on here. Dan, tell us more about the actual function of this wild, wildlife care center, how it is funded, how it is supported, and tell us more about it. The Wildlife Care Center has been in Fort Lauderdale for 36 years, and our mission is to rescue, rehabilitate, and release native wildlife that has been harmed or displaced, and we also um, find homes for certain domestic and exotic animals, uh, such as farm animals, uh, rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, those kind of animals. And we also educate the public to respect all animals and coexist with, with uh, all species of animals. And the Wildlife Care Center last year alone treated more than 15,000 animals. And our, we have two full-time ambulances out on the road seven days a week. We have a staff at our admissions office that answers 300 phone calls a day and 700 volunteers that are out in the community helping us. And of course, our education program that is out in the schools. Last year alone we reached 17,000 children and adults with our program. 
Dan, this is most interesting, and I just feel that I need to ask you this question. What troubles me about our beautiful world and the superficial human society that tends to be superficial is, you know, we see movies like E.T., where the whole world is supposed to become enamored with a little creature from space that doesn't really exist. And, you know, at Easter time, people talk of bunnies and this and that. But yet, in real life, people are so horrifically callous when it comes to regards uh, for animals and nature and the environment. How do you explain this, this strange paradox of superficiality and so forth? Well, there are, are so many issues going on in the world every day. I think people are certainly concerned about themselves for the more, most part. Um, there, there are many good people that care about the animals and the wildlife and dogs and cats and uh, situations like that. But I think many people live in the moment. For instance, you mentioned the, the rabbits at Easter. Uh, the children see the rabbits advertised on TV. Somebody is advertising those little baby bunnies, making a lot of money on it, and the kids tell their parents, we want a baby bunny. Uh, their parents buy, buy them the baby bunny, and a couple months later, they don't want them anymore. So people don't think of the long-term responsibility involved. And I think that's, that's part of the problem. Uh, people think that maybe uh, loss of wildlife habitat isn't going to affect me personally or isn't going to affect me in our lifetime. But we have to think about the future and our children and our children's children. And, and we don't want them to someday end up with uh, no wildlife in our backyards that we have to pay to go to a zoo to see a raccoon or a squirrel. Tell us about the need for improving public education and knowledge as to how essential it is for people to understand the role animals play in our world and our interdependence, in fact. So many times it's a matter of people just not knowing. And, for instance, we get many, many phone calls every day from people saying, come get this animal out of our yard. Uh, we do not do that. We take sick and injured and orphan animals. But if someone looks out the window and sees an opossum in their yard, they get hysterical and call and say, I have a big rat in my yard. Well, if they call us and describe the animal, we'll tell them it's an opossum and they're good to have in your yard. They were living here when you built your house there. Uh, they're good to have around. They eat rotten fruit. They eat palmetto bugs. Um, and we can educate people. And, and some people, once they know, will say, wow, that's, it's great to have an opossum in my yard. Uh, they're not aggressive, they're, we don't have to worry that they're going to come kill our children or anything like that. And if we just leave them alone, they'll be good and they'll be fine to have in our yard. Dan, I need to ask you again about education. It is my feeling that not enough is done to educate children in school as to what really is necessary for them to know as far as wildlife is concerned. And does the public have a proper perception of what you're doing here? We believe that education is so crucial to the future of Florida's wildlife and animals. Um, that's why we're, we're out in the schools. We have a full-time humane educator giving free programs in the community. But we, we learn so much by these programs and interacting with the children about how much they don't know. Uh, many times they think that the Wildlife Care Center is a zoo-type facility where people can come on a uh, little picnic and, and spend the day. Uh, we are not. We are a wildlife hospital. We have four veterinarians on our staff. and and animal care staff and ambulances and, and a lot of people working really hard to care for all of these animals and return them back to the wild. So we are not a tourist attraction, uh, which is why we don't allow people to just walk around through the habitats and look at the animals. Um, another important aspect of that is that when we are raising babies or rehabilitating wildlife, they have to stay wild. They have to have a healthy fear of humans and they cannot be imprinted. Uh, if we were to raise babies squirrels and baby raccoons like you would raise a puppy or kitten, uh, cuddle them, talk to them. Uh, you know, they, when they were released, they would have no fear of humans and they would be approaching people. So our staff is specially trained to be very, very careful, uh, keep the minimum of talking in the nursery. Uh, some species we don't even make eye contact. We wear hoods with baby owls and raccoons and animals like that so that they don't make eye contact. And when they're old enough and they're released, they, they will have a fear of humans and they'll be more likely to survive. So, so much of it is education. So much of it is important. And I think that's our responsibility. Diane, thank you. I'd like to end with one thought. I really believe that the work you're doing here is so terribly important and it is a darn shame that uh, the establishment, the world we live in, that governments aren't making sure that humanity extends compassion to all uh, living things around us, not only to people. In fact, we fail in that also. But anyway, I, uh, I'm full of admiration for what you're doing, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. 
Thank you, Richard, for giving us the opportunity to get our message out to more people. My pleasure, Diane. We'll continue just after this.